Okay, so in this setup guide today, we are checking out Wii U emulation with the very awesome CMU. So this was recently received an experimental update, and it's also an update to my channel since I last did a setup guide for CMU. So in this setup guide, I'm going to be showing you how to set this up, how to add your games to CMU. I'm going to be going through controller settings with you and how to map out your controller. I'm also going to be showing you video settings as well as troubleshooting. So if you want to play some really awesome Wii U games, using CMU, then check this one out. Okay then, before I start today, CMU Wii U emulator setup guide for Windows PC. If you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. That just means you'll get notifications every time I release a setup guide just like this one today and it also helps out my channel a great deal. So why would we want to use CMU when we got, say, Yuzu? And of course, a lot of Wii U games have got ported over to the Switch. Uh, hence use you emulation so the good thing is with Wii U is that there's particular games which are also available to emulate through Yuzu emulator but Wii U CMU will give you a better experience let's just say Breath of the Wild for example many patches available on this through CMU and you can play this a hell of a lot faster and quicker and smoother using CMU and let's not forget about several titles which the Nintendo Switch didn't get. Uh, Yoshi's Woolly World, for example. We also got Kirby and the Rainbow Paintbrush. Uh, we got several other games, such as uh, Devil's Third. So anyways, let's get on to this. What we're gonna do is just go over to the CMU website. And before I actually show you how to download and install this, it's worth looking at compatibility list. So just here, you're gonna find a list which can be played perfect. So. What we got just here is a little legend of different emojis almost. So obviously the one with the hearts in the eyes, if we just scroll down and look for our games, those legends at the top will then correspond with each game. And just remember that we also got European and USA releases here. So if a game for USA is gonna work, not necessarily it's a European release gonna work just as well. And there's also gonna be Japanese games within this list too. Now, perfect 14% doesn't sound very good, but playable 39%, to be honest with you, most of these games are, I'd say 99% perfect. So what we're gonna do is actually download the latest. Now, this latest version of CMU is the experimental version, and it actually released two days ago. So to get this, we're gonna to go to download, and we're gonna download the latest experimental version. So of course, like it says, if you do run into any issues with the current stable, which is 2.0, which I previously covered uh, back in October 2023, then the experimental version is quite likely gonna work for you. So what we're going to do is just go over to this GitHub page, click on Assets, and from here we're going to download the Windows Times 64 version. There is no 32-bit version of CMU. So once this has been downloaded, we're just going to open up the zip folder and just extract it to the desktop. If we just close this one down a minute, and of course, once this has been extracted, you can then delete your zip folder. So for this setup guide, I'm going to be using Kirby and the Rainbow Paintbrush and also Yoshi's Woolly World. Both very awesome games, which surely deserves a Nintendo Switch release at this point. So if we go into the Send You folder or CMU folder, what we're going to do first is just open up the executable. So we've got CMU.exe, double left click on this one. If you're using Windows 11, then from time to time, you'll experience Windows protected your PC. If this is the case, go to more info and run it anyway. Okay, so the first thing you're going to see is getting started. It's going to be asking us for a game path. So what I recommend doing at this point is making everything portable. So we've got CMU inside its own folder. So what I'm going to do is right click in my CMU folder and create a new folder. And I'm going to simply call this folder games. And I'm going to just drag and drop both of my Wii U games inside of this folder. And whilst we're talking about games, let me just show you how these need to be. So Wii U games are going to be like this. You're going to have a little code at the end. If we just go inside one of these, you're going to find three subfolders. Code, content, meta. Now, if we go into code, 
This spiral just here, which ends with .rpx, that's the most important one. That's going to boot your game. So if we come out of here, and what we're going to do next is actually link up the game path with CMU, where I've just put my games. So what we're going to do is go to Browse, and then I'm going to navigate to where my CMU folder is. And I'm going to just highlight by left clicking once on games, select folder. And whilst we're here, we've also got the option to download community graphics packs. We just left click on this. And it's just little things like this which makes this better in many ways than Yuzu. So do you want to view the downloaded graphics packs? Just press no. And we're going to go to next. Next up, what we're going to do is just go to configure input. So left click. And I'm using a Google Stadia controller for this. So what I'm going to do is just give this a new profile name so we can save it. And should our savings go, we can just load up the profile again. Very simple stuff. So emulator's controller, I'm going to be going for the Wii U gamepad. And for the controller, API. And under API, I'm going to select an API, which is going to recognize my Google Stadia controller. So for this, I'm going to select direct input. Now, some of you might not see your controller using this. Some of you might have better luck with X input. If I select direct input controller, I'll now see my Google Stadia. So I'm going to press add. And from here, we can actually now map out controller. So we're going to go to A, and I'm going to press A on my Google Stadia controller. And same for B. And as you notice, with each mapping, or rather each button I'm pressing, it's actually moving down for us. So the plus button I'm going to press is my start button, and the minus is going to be my select. Left axis is going to be, say, the left analog stick. So click, obviously push down on your left analog. And right axis and D-pad, of course. And for some particular games, a game like Super Mario 3D World, from time to time, we'll have to blow into the microphone in order to make things move. So obviously, we're going to be emulating this system through a controller, but we can actually map out a button as an alternative to blowing into the microphone. So for this, I'm going to just press another button on my controller. And I'm also going to use show screen as another button on my controller. And that's it. So all we're going to do now is simply go to save. Profile saved. And we can just close out of here. Now, next up, we got additional options. So we can start games with full screen. And we can also open separate pad screen. So once we're playing our game, we can actually have an additional screen which will represent the actual Wii U gamepad. But we're going to get onto that in a minute. So for this, I'm going to just press close. And here we go. So we've actually got our games installed now. And if I right click on each one of these games, I can actually go down to edit graphics packs. And the graphics packs that we downloaded during setup is gave us these enhancements, these graphics packs. So for example, if I go to resolution for Kirby, active preset is going to display in 720p native. We drop this down technically we can upscale this up to around 8k which i won't recommend but you can also upscale it to 1080p which is of course a massive bonus i'm going to leave it as default for now but the option is there if you want it once you downloaded these graphics packs and we can also use workarounds in some of these graphics packs so for example fix invincible lines we also got aa removal if we check this Okay, if we just close out of here, what I'm going to do next is just boot up Kirby. So double left click. Now, annoyingly with Kirby, there doesn't appear to be a workaround to actually play this particular game with your controller. So I'm actually using this game with my mouse. Now, if you're familiar with this game, the original game, you had to use the screen on the gamepad, the Wii U gamepad. So as an alternative, I'm actually using my mouse for this. If I left click. Now you're also going to see with CMU that every now and again, your gameplay is going to lag and it'll pop up, say, shaders from time to time. What this is doing is building up all the graphics and all the data and it's putting it into a folder. 
And the next time you boot up a game, just like a lot of higher end emulators nowadays, second time you boot up these games, you'll less likely see lag because all of those graphics has been put into that folder. we can see that's working perfectly so what I've done to enable full screen mode and go back to window mode is just by pressing alt and enter on your keyboard simultaneously this will switch between the two just like this so let's just close this down a minute and what we're going to do is open a CMU folder back and what I'm going to suggest doing is actually making a shortcut so if we right click on the CMU XE show more options and we're going to go to send to desktop create shortcut and now I can access CMU just like this. Okay, so what else can we do? So we got Yoshi's Woolly World, and from here, what I'm going to do is just go down to Edit Graphics Pack. And again, just like Kirby and most games that you'll emulate using CMU, you're going to find loads of different enhancement options. Uh, just like Kirby, for this game, Yoshi's Woolly World, we can actually use ultra wide hack on this as well as render it 4k or upscale it 4k again it's probably going to lag a lot and even if you've got a higher end computer gaming pc or gaming laptop it will likely struggle so just be very modest with your settings i'm going to put this one to 1080p we've also got 60 fps world map mods here to use so i'm going to check this one and just close out now from my last video people was asking me how do i install updates or DLC to my Wii U game so very simply uh, you just go to file at the top install game title update or DLC and then in this games folder where you're going to drag all these things just simply click on the files and that's really it so automatically install your updates and DLC for your games for you so I'm going to open up Yoshi's Woolly World, but before this, I'm going to actually show you how to get the gamepad screen simultaneously. So that's going to be under options at the top, separate gamepads view. And here's our gamepad being emulated. And if I open up Yoshi's Woolly World, and here we go. And here we are then, so obviously it's going to be compiling shaders just like any Wii U game you're going to emulate. So we've got the emulated game pads view just here on the right, as well as our TV screen if you like on the left. And should you need sound on the game pads to play a game, then to do this all we need to do is go to options, general settings. And from general settings, if you just go over to audio, uh, under game pads, device is currently disabled you can actually emulate the sound of the gamepad itself. So I'm going to just turn the volume back up on my game. Ha <laughs> ha
as you can see, running at absolutely perfect. You also notice with a game like Yoshi's Woolly World, it will collect shaders a lot more than something like Kirby. There's more going on. But as you can see, as the game is going on, those graphics are being put into a folder and you'll find smoother gameplay. So I'm going to do troubleshooting now. So if we go to options, if you get any issues with video not working, uh, controllers not working, sounds not working, we're just going to go down to general settings. And from here, we can then go to graphics. Now, this is set to Vulcan, and primarily, this is supposed to work fine with Vulcan. It does in my case. If you get any issues running games that don't work for you, but they're supposed to work, you can try out OpenGL, but that's going to then disable your graphics card. I also suggest putting VSync on. What this does is takes away screen tear. So that's a really nice way of taking away those wavy screen tears you might see in some 3D games. We also got upscale filter in here. So some of these just here will blur your game slightly just to take the edge and the sharpness off of some of the gameplay. And we can also stretch our games, but I wouldn't recommend that. Now for audio, if you've got any issues with sounds not coming out, then just like graphics, API we also got sound API so direct sound works fine for me obviously swap this over to X audio 2 or QB if you get no luck with direct sound and that's it for today's CMU Wii U emulator setup guide from Windows PC so hopefully this one's been a little bit more detailed than the last setup guide I did for this going back in October 2023 um, after reading some feedback, some problems you was having, I tried my best to address those issues. But anyways, if you're new to my channel, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content that I release every day. Also join me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.